Hello, and welcome back to my let's play of an English mod. Last time, our best friend Professor Mo has rigged a boxing competition. Well, I guess probably correct to call it a boxing. He rigged a boxing match by poisoning one of the competitors uh, and used that to win a neat thousand pounds, which we then used to save a man from the mob. And in return, we gained the first piece of our machine. Photographic plate. Now, we have attempted to get a power element that would be used to power it, but unfortunately the archaeologist who should have it is missing somewhere. And we just need to wait for his uh, clerk, apprentice, something like that, for someone related to him to come back to his office. So for the time being, the only lead we have left is Florence Cook who produces ectoplasm, which we also need for our machine. So, let's go and visit him. Yet another fro fraudulent medium. Florence Cook herself, for example. She was studied by several researchers. Those who certified her as a fraud belong to the London intellectual. Several of them affiliated with the Conservative Party. Believe me, Mr. Taylor, when I say that our leaders are not interested in us being aware of the truth. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy, but you are saying it's a conspiracy. But it is a conspiracy. <sighs> oh, good afternoon. You are part of the group, I assume. Excuse me? The advertisement. I beg your pardon? I placed an advertisement in the British Association of Supernatural Studies newsletter, taking people to join me at my school session. Only Mr. Morton and Mr. Taylor responded to the call. Tell me, did you also come because of the advertisement? Um... Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, of course. Oh, I'm glad. I'm Joseph Brown. Patrick Moore. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Moore. You don't have to worry about money. It's the advertisement itself. It's all paid for. And you couldn't get anyone to come even for a free medium session. Wow. I appreciate that. I hope you don't think Katie, Katie King is, is a fraud, as they have tried to make us believe. Well, I suppose we'll soon find out. Yes, of course. That's the idea. Oh! Gentlemen, Miss Cook informs me, informs me she is ready. Remember to remain silent throughout the session. It is of the utmost importance that no matter what happens, and no matter what you see, you do not leave your seat. Um, will we see Katie King? I cannot ensure that. But it seems that this evening, the medium's spiritual energies are in full swing. So, your wish will probably come true. Fascinating. If you would be so kind to join. Are you nervous, Mr. Moore? Oh yes, I am shaking all over. I be an opiate to calm your nerves. Wow, okay. That would certainly help with the medium session. I usually carry some with me for <laughs> medicinal purposes. But promise me you won't tell anyone. It won't be necessary. Shall we go in? Yes, yes, of course. Nice dinner in all the chairs. Really makes them look 3D. I suppose my niece has informed you of the guidelines to follow during the session. Know that communication with the spirit world is very delicate. Any unexpected event could result in the loss of connection with the beyond. Therefore, allow me to remind you of what you must not forget while the medium is in a trance. You cannot rise from your seat once the session has begun. If Katie King were to manifest, do not speak to her. She cannot see or hear you. She will only communicate through me. She is quite sensitive to what happens in this world, so try not to make any sudden moves. She could get scared and disappear. If you wish to convey a message to her, address it, address it to me. Even while in a trance, I will be able to hear you and transmit your words. 
Have everyone understood? Any questions or doubts before we begin? Do we have to put our hands on the table during the session? Do you have psychic powers, Mr. Brown? Me? N no, no. I have. Then let the medium be the one to place your hands on the table to channel psychic energies. All right? Yes, of course. Let's begin. Katie King, daughter of John King, you who left this life to join the world of the dead, you who have been living in the shadows ever since, I summon you, O oh wandering spirit. Let us witness your presence in this world, to which unfortunately you no longer belong. Leave the darkness and join the living. And I assume this is a woman legally distinct from her niece. Florence! Is that you, Florence? Oh, where am I I am here, Katie King. The sound of my voice will guide you to me. Join us. The researchers are right. The manifestation emanates the set of flowers. I feel... I feel life in this place. You are not alone. No, dear. I am accompanied by people who have come to see you. Who are they? I cannot see them. Only feel them. Mr. Brown is with me on my right. Opposite me sit Mr. Morton and Mr. Taylor. And finally, Mr. Moore on my left. Nice to meet you, gentlemen. Katie says she's pleased to meet you. We, we can hear you. Here. Unbelievable. Katie King must be using all her energy to communicate with this reality. Katie? Yes, Florence. My guests inform me that they can hear your voice. That is wonderful. Can I convey a message to them? Of course, dear. You are blessed to live in a world that, while not perfect, is full of wonders. Where I come from, there is nothing. Everything is dark. It is a lonely place. He is dead. Do not waste your lives on conflicts. Avoid problems. Live your lives as if they, as if each day was the last. My final message. Goodbye. Those were those are very beautiful words, dear. Does anyone wish to ask Katie King a question? And the music stops abruptly. Gentlemen, Katie King exists. This session has been a success. We should celebrate. I know an exquisite restaurant not far from here. What do you think about going to the Regent Street Smokers Club instead? What up, Mr. Morton? I know a brothel that... Mr. Taylor's opinion. Mr. Taylor's wish. You, Eddie King, we must leave life. Let's get moving, gentlemen. They are very easily impressed. I imagine because of all the opiates. Ah, and the woman who is not getting in. The session is over, Mr. Moore. Do you need anything else? You were Katie King, weren't you? No, I don't know what you're talking about. You just had to change clothes and appear from the shadows. My good sir, I don't know what you're aiming at, but I beg you to leave. Uh, forgive me, but my intention is not to cause trouble. Moore just cannot help himself to pick a fight wherever he goes. My name is Patrick Moore. I'm a university professor. I'm involved in metapsychic research along with my colleague Nelson Ward. Oh no, not again. I hoped I would never hear that name again in my life. Uh, I'm confused. Do you have trouble with my colleague? I will tell you the same thing I told Professor Ward. You will not get the ectoplasm sample at the expense of my aunt's, aunt's life. So you can... Enough, Charlotte. 
But I'm Florence, I... I've said it, enough. I've made a decision. If you'd be so kind to step aside, I need to speak with this gentleman. So you work with Professor Ward? That's correct. And where is he? Uh, he couldn't come, fugitive from justice, I have no idea. Fugitive from justice. I beg your pardon. Why you all that is sacred, Aunt Florence? This is getting murkier by the minute. Silence, child. I could deliberate further on my answer, but it is uh, complicated. I do not want to know more. In fact, I do not care. If it's alright with you, let's get this conversation in order. My colleague left a note saying you could you could provide an ectoplasm sample. That is correct. I don't mean to be rude, but I believe he made a mistake in thinking you'd be the right person for the job. Your reputation is uh, questionable, Miss Cook. And what I saw in there confirms it. Forget what you have seen. Anyone except the group you came with would know it's a crude setup. But Professor Nelson has a memory. It is something that is sadly lacking in all those who hear the name Lawrence Cook for the first time. What do you mean? I have not always been a fraud, Mr. Moore. When I was just a teenager, I contacted an entity who called himself Sergeant Hughes. I managed to materialize ectoplasm through my body, and this entity used it to communicate with me. I thought it was a good way to make a living, and it was, for the past few weeks. But with each session, Sergeant Hughes gained more strength, to the point of possessing my body. He became more and more violent. His intention was to invade this reality, a reality to which he did not belong. I managed to sever the link, but his last words were a threat. A death threat. It was then that I created Katie King. A contrivance, of course. But safe, without risking my life. People didn't care. They were still amazed by the sessions. Since then, there have been several Katie Kings. I was the first, but logically, I had to stay young. The latest Katie King, as you have seen, is my niece Charlotte. Do you understand now, Mr. Moore? My aunt can't do what you are asking. She could die if she invoked Sergeant Hughes. I'm sorry, I was unaware of this. It's not my intention to put you in danger. That doesn't matter now. I'm sick, Mr. Moore. Very sick. I've been given up on. Doctors have diagnosed that I have no more than two months left to live. I want to do it. I don't want to live this life without the world knowing that I was never a fraud. Well, you were a fraud, just for some time. So, you're in luck. You will have your ectoplasm sample. I believe your niece is right. Invoking that entity could. It is my will, and you must respect it. I want that sample more than anything in this world, but I am also concerned about your safety. And I would like to have a clear conscience. Your will. As I said, this is what I want. Mind you, I am not going to summon the bastard without the presence of William Crookes. Crookes? The scientist who discovered the element thallium? Among other things, yes. When my name and Katie Kings became famous, Several researchers wanted to verify the authenticity of the phenomenon. One of them was a promising scientist and a member of the Royal Society. He validated the phenomenon. He knew it was all a hoax, but he didn't want to discredit me in society's eyes. He was criticized and almost discredited as a scientist. I'd like to have him at the session. I have a lot to say to him. He was an important person in my life. Although I doubt he'll accept the invitation if my niece or I reach out to him. Tell me, Mr. Moore, can you get Mr. Crooks to come? Know that I won't lift a finger without his attendance. Yes, I'll try. He resides in Berkeley Square. Ask any coachman nearby, and they'll tell you where to find him. Bring Mr. Crooks here, and we can start the session. In the meantime, I'll begin the preparations. All right. So, we have an object. Do you know that your selfishness will make my aunt die? 
I forget it. I am outnumbered. I cannot fight against your greed and my aunt's stubbornness. May God's will be done. Just this one's play me, Patrick, you know. These flowers smell very nice. What kind of flowers are they? Labellias. There are several business cards on the tray. You can take one, if you wish. Thank you. Alright, we have a business card. And it says... Apologies. And it has the address of Portugal. An 1873 portrait of Katie King. She looks very young. The flowers give off an intoxicating aroma. They are African lilies. Oh, they are, they are African lilies. Anything else? Portraits. These are some of the scientists who investigated the phenomenon of Katie King. Mr. Crooks is the one in the middle. The painting, this painting reminds me of The Hill of Dreams by Arthur Michael. And that's it. Alright, let's go to Mr. Crooks. Who has a mate? He must be quite wealthy. I will inform Mr. Crooks. What did you say your name was? Oh, Patrick Moore. And she reflects in the mirror, so she's not a vampire. Mr. Crooks, a gentleman named Patrick Moore wishes to see you. He will attend to you right away. Thank you. Also, not a vampire. Yeah, what do you want? My name is Patrick Moore. I'm a university professor. What? Medicine. Nice to meet you. Although I come to you as... Um, I might a psychic researcher. An interesting pseudoscience. Certainly interesting, but unproductive, if I may express my opinion. Mr. Moore, I'm aware that I'm known for having been involved in these matters for some for informal times. But all that been to the past. I do not know how I, how I could help you. I do not want, want to bore you with details, so I'll be brief. I am completing a machine that will be a breakthrough in the field of metapsychics. You have attention. Continue. But I need several elements to carry it out. One of them is a sample of ectoplasm that the medium Florence Cook could, could provide me. Florence? Did you say Florence Cook? Yes. I will save you some time, Mr. Moore. Florence Cook is a fraud. I also doubt her mediumistic abilities. Although I have my reasons to give her the benefit of the doubt. Let us do it. Don't say nobody. She asked me to beg you to attend the session. She won't do it if you're not present. No. I know that... I'm not getting involved in this, sir. I have been nominated for the Nobel Prize, sir. And I've recently knighted. The last thing I need is to be associated with these matters again. I'm sorry, I can't. Okay. Aren't you curious to find out if Florence Cook isn't a fraud after all? I thoroughly investigated Florence Cook, Mr. Moore. I believe me, that woman has no extraordinary powers. However, your conclusion about her was quite the opposite. It's very complicated. You wouldn't understand. I did not want to be too harsh on her because it was... Let's just say it was a dishonest act that jeopardized my credibility as a son. Uh, using the name of science, Mr. Brooks. Metas, metapsychics is not a sign. Chemistry and physics, those are signs. I don't take much of your time. I've already given you my refusal, Mr. Moore. Please do not insist. I could bring you the blueprints of my machine. Yes, you have already told me about. It runs on ectoplasm. Yes, well, not exactly. Maybe the details, Mr. Moore. Remember, you are talking to a scientist. You said you were interested in the world of metapsychics. I also told you, it was completely unproductive. May I give you some advice? Don't waste your time investigating these matters. You are young. Do you want to end up like those dark cases from BASS believing they've summoned? Who is on this month? Cleopatra? St. John the Baptist? Ah, uh, Ludwig Van Beethoven. 
Oh, of course. Bitch, boy. I've had, a, I've had contact with an entity. Are you running out of arguments to try to convince me, Mr. Moore? As I've already told you, I cannot help you. No, if you'll excuse me. I have to review the speech I will be giving at the headquarters of the British Confederation of Scientific Society. I only have a short time before the coachman picks me up. Good luck to you, Mr. Moore. Lawrence Cook is dying. What's wrong with her? She didn't specify what illness it is, but her life expectancy is months, weeks. She wants to see you before she dies. Is this emotional racketeering? Is that your final desperate argument to try to convince me? Oh, no. I already re exhausted all my resources trying unsuccessfully to convince you a moment ago. I'm just conveying Miss Cook's words to you. I'll be frank with you, Mr. Moore. My mind is split in two halves. One is controlled by reason, and to it I owe becoming a respected scientist. Spirituality and simply other half. That's why I became interested in the afterlife. I wanted answers, and that led me to investigate Florence case. At that time, she was considered the most authentic medium in London. The, investi the investigation lasted longer than necessary, because we realized we enjoyed each other's company. We fell in love, Mr. Moore. I concluded that Florence's powers were nothing but a hope. It was obvious that Katie King was her, although no one else realized it. But even so, I was so in love with Florence that I wanted to cover for her and admitted that everything was real. Those plates shook my credibility. Even my career was at risk. Florence didn't want everything to end like that. So, in an act of what I now see as bravery, she ended our relationship. She broke my heart. I haven't seen her since. And if what you say about her illness is true. It is, believe me. In that case, my heart would break again if I were to see her in that state. I want to hold on to the memory I have of Florence. Full of life. Full of light. Do you understand me? But she... Please respect my decision. And please apologize to Florence for me. I've taken a liking to you, Mr. Moore. You'll be welcome in this house anytime, even if I'm asked. Feel free to consult my library whenever you Do you know just the shame? Of course. I have several first editions on the second show. You'll find them interesting. Good afternoon, Mr. Moore. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Alright, well at least we have a place to stay now. Let's see what we can steal from his place. A bit of warmth is appreciated after spending the whole day walking the cold streets of London. You were not walking, you are keep riding in a car. And I actually don't know where you get money for that. I no longer need to watch the clock for the university boards to decide whether or not to close the Department of Metapsychic Research. Beatrice is right. If we manage to make the both of revelations work, we'll prove to everyone the existence of the spectral world. Chameleons. Daisies. The library, this library is quite a treasure. It contains volumes that would be the dream of any antiquarian. Can we go through it? I guess the main is not going to let us. Excuse me? Yes. Couldn't you convince Mr. Crooks? That would be meddling in Mr. Crooks' affairs. It would exceed me duties. I need Mr. Crooks to accompany me to that session. I understand, but I'm sorry I can help you. There's nothing you can do for me, right? I'm just a simple maid, sir. Where are they expecting Mr. Crooks? He has to give a speech at the British Confederation of Scientific Societies. The coachman should be arriving soon. Carry on with your work. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? A mirror. Fatigue is starting to take its toll on me. The dark circles under my eyes are becoming more and more evident. Okay, plant. Petunias. And a tray. There is a sealed envelope inside that tray. It's for the coachman. It contains a card with the address where Mr. Crooks will give his speech. Don't lay a hand on it, if you please. Ah, I see what we are doing. 
business card in the envelope. I'll put Florence Cook's business card in the envelope. Envelope in the tray. I can be quick and swap the envelopes. The time is now. Done. I'm sure he'll be happy about reaching uh, an unplanned destination. I think I've heard a horse carriage. And the coachman must be waiting at the door. Oh, Mr. Moore, I see you're still here. How do you find my little library? Very interesting. I could spend all day perusing each and every volume. But I must be off. Thank you for your hospitality. It has been a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Moore. We may see each other again one of these days. Sooner than you think. Good afternoon, Mr. Crooks. Good afternoon, Mr. Moore. Now, where did I leave that envelope with the address of the British Confederation of Scientific Societies headquarters? Ah, yes. On the train. Well, let's see how this goes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hmm. This is not the headquarters of the British Confederation of Scientific Societies. Are you Mr. William Crooks? Indeed. Do we know each other? Mr. Vaughan, what are you doing here? Oh, Lawrence? It is a pleasure to see you again, William. You! You are the one behind this setup. You must have switched the envelope intended for my coaching. Am I correct, Mr. Moore? Leave Mr. Moore alone, William. I don't know what methods he used to bring you here, but he was just fulfilling my wish. I would deny that I am pleased to see you again. But Katie King, the manifestation, all that is now behind. It belongs to the past. Today, I do not want to get involved in such matters. I am a respected scientist. I wouldn't have required your presence if it weren't. Yes, it's the more informed me of energy. I'm sorry about your illness. But that is not... Oh my god. I'm very angry about the situation. But... Let me look at you more closely. You're still as beautiful as ever. I am not the one... I am not the young woman you once knew, Will. I am old. Nor am I that handsome gentleman. Grey hair looks good on you. My eyes find you even more attractive than back then. <laughs> mm. Gentlemen, miss, I must thank you for this unexpected gathering. It has made me feel 30 years younger. As long as I get to spend more time with Miss Cook, Miss Cook. I will do the shit. Come with me, William. I'll explain everything to you. This is frustrating. I thought Mr. Crooks would talk some sense into him. I hope my aunt doesn't have any problem. If anything happens to her, I will hold you responsible. Well, Patrick is once again making a lot of friends. I hope everything goes well. <clears throat> Alright, here's what we are going to do. Sergeant Hughes used to possess me when the ectoplasma had just formed. I'll try to contain the emanation and prevent it from taking its final form, long enough for you to take the sample. Do you have a container on you, Mr. Moore? Yes, here it is. As soon as, as you have taken the sample, I'll cut the connection. Are you all clear, Mr. Moore? Yes. Be quick. I don't want to give that bastard a chance to fulfill his threat. There's a lot of light in here. Do you need us to turn off the light and close the curtains? Darkness, candles, and all that paraphernalia are just for ambience and to influence the gullible. I could summon that bastard in the middle of Trafalgar Square. Aunt Florence, you still have time. 
Please, this has gone too far. I'm aware of the danger, and the decision is made. Whatever happens, I want you to know that I love you. As for you, William, I regret all the harm I caused you. It never mattered to me, Florence. I managed to restore my reputation through my scientific discoveries. I'm not talking about that. I pushed you away when we could have had a nice life together. We still have time. Everything will be fine. I will focus. I will let you know when I'm ready. Take your time. Okay, I guess we now examine this place. But you know what? We will go through with the medium ship seance tomorrow. For now, this is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching, everyone. And have a good day. Goodbye.